Today, we share the poignant story of Deanna Isom, a woman who faced unspeakable violence and lived to tell the tale, only to succumb to its lasting effects. Her journey serves as a stark reminder of the devastating consequences of gun violence. Her remarkable journey, marked by survival and strength, serves as a stark reminder of the urgent need to address the pervasive issue of gun violence in our society. Welcome to American Crime, Femicide Channel. Please subscribe, like, and click the notification button. 20-year-old Deanna Isom was a smart, loving, hard-working, and family-oriented young lady. She had recently graduated high school and was looking forward to studying criminal justice at Milwaukee Area Technical College in fall of 2021. When she was not working, she could be found recreating her image with different hairstyles and makeup. On August 5, 2021, Deanna found herself facing a nightmarish scenario that no one should ever endure. One night after returning home from one of her two jobs, she along with her friend went to the gas station. On their way back home, they were met with a barrage of bullets from an unknown assailant. Deanna was left critically wounded, struck by a shocking total of 11 bullets. A stranger driving by stopped to help. I just watched her in and out, struggle for her life. And like her breathing, it was like kind of going in and out. I never prayed for nobody in my life. But I was just telling her, baby, God got you. Hold on, God, please. Speed, shield, protect this baby. You know what I'm saying? She was shot three times in the face, the chest, her shoulder, and both of her hands. She was left paralyzed from the waist down and had to use a tracheotomy tube. Her survival was nothing short of a miracle, but the scars, both physical and emotional, would forever shape her life. Sadly, her friend, 23-year-old William Dion Jefferson, died at the scene. I was looking at him. And his head dropped. So, I tried to get out. I, I thought I was not safe. At all. Though Deanna survived physically, the scars left behind by those bullets went beyond the visible. The trauma she endured would forever shape her life, impacting her mental, emotional, and physical well-being. Gun violence doesn't end with the last shot, its echoes reverberate long after. What is it like to be a gun violence survivor, Deanna? It's scary because you will never know if the person will want to come back and finish what they started. Deanna's strength and resilience were nothing short of inspiring. Despite the immense pain and trauma she endured, she fought valiantly to regain her health and reclaim her life. A lot of people get shot one time and don't make it. I was shot 11 times. Her journey was marked by countless surgeries, grueling rehabilitation, and the unwavering support of loved ones. I got a lot of love. And it is. It control it, it, it beats the depression. As the months passed, Deanna's physical wounds slowly began to heal, but the emotional scars remained. The trauma of that fateful day lingered, casting a shadow over her every step. She persevered through sleepless nights, debilitating anxiety, and the haunting memories of that life-altering moment. Okay to be a survivor, but it's not going to be easy. As Deanna courageously fought her battles, she also became a voice against gun violence. Stop the violence. You can say it. But are we doing it? Can we do it? Her resilience transformed into advocacy, as she shared her story to shed light on the devastating impact of firearms on lives and families. Her mission was clear, to prevent others from enduring the pain she faced. Being so close to death. Life is too short to be mad. I'm not even mad at whoever did this. By August of 2022, one year later, she was enrolled in college at Colorado State University and was studying accounting. She had taken the worst day in her life and created scrubs for nurses taking care of gun violence survivors like herself. There are some amazing, amazing CNAs, and there are CNAs that take care of gun, uh, gun violence victims. 
and I think they should be able to wear that. What are they going to Okay. It's gonna be gun violence survivor. I was gonna put that logo on the leg. Three words that mean so much to her and are a constant reminder for her and other survivors. I want people to know that when they go to the hospital and they're gonna, a victim to gun violence, that they're not alone. While so much had changed since that August night, Isom said this year is dedicated to regaining her mobility with the hopes of one day walking again. She started physical therapy at the end of the August and occupational therapy in September of 2022. Despite her tenacity, on March 13, 2023, the very wounds inflicted upon Deanna by the bullets she survived finally claimed her life. She died of a cardiac arrest. <laughs> a powerful moment inside St. Luke's Hospital. Her honor walk was amazing. Just like the battles Deanna Isom overcame. God gave her a second chance. And now Deanna is giving seven people a chance to live through organ donation. On Saturday, she lost her fight after suffering a cardiac arrest a year and a half after being shot 11 times and surviving. It wasn't supposed to be that way because she fought so hard. I'm gonna miss everything about her, good or bad. I'm gonna miss it all. The last time I spoke to Deanna, she was excited about regaining her mobility and even enrolling in college. Call. Have her heartbeat in your hand. How do you feel holding it? Um, I feel safe. Like I feel like she, like she watching over me right now. To her family, Deanna was everything. She listens. She don't judge. To the people she's saving, a prayer answered. God blessed her to be able to be a blessing to these other people. Through the tears and laughter, <laughs> as they flip through pictures and reminisce about the good times. I like this one. <laughs> Family and friends gathered together on March 25th to lay Deanna to rest. The story how I made it over I am going to put on my robe tell tell how I made it, I made it all up, all I need to I'm going to turn over the road and tell the story, how I made it over, oh thank you see. Y'all appreciate everybody that's here. I'm surprised a lot of people showed up and all this weather out here. Everybody said it. My daughter had the biggest heart ever. She put their feelings before hers. Everybody. She helped people get through a sickness that we never met in person. It was, she got herself together. But miss her looking past everybody who we get home from work. Don't nobody matter until she know her daddy is in the house. She looked past everybody where my daddy at. She don't care about nothing else. She want to make sure her daddy is at home. And she explained to me why she do that because she feels so safe and comfortable when she around me. And Deanna leaves behind a legacy of strength, resilience, and a fervent plea to address the root causes of gun violence. What does closure look like for you? Justice. Them calling me and telling me like, hey, we have the guys that killed your best friend and shot you. Arrested. The world lost a survivor, an advocate, and a symbol of hope. Her passing underscored the urgency of addressing the root causes of gun violence and enacting meaningful change. Her family's saying the same thing, put the guns down, stop the violence, but how, how are we going to do that? We got to start with us first. And if we can't come together, I mean, what, what else can we do? We sitting here, I mean, every day watching the news, watching a mother, watching a, a, a father, an aunt, 
they lost somebody. Somebody's losing somebody every day. When is it going to stop? Deanna's story is not just a tale of tragedy, it's a call to action. We cannot stand idly by as lives are shattered by bullets and dreams are extinguished by the roar of gunfire. We must unite to demand change, comprehensive gun control, mental health support, and an end to the culture of violence that permeates our society. It's a plea to recognize the profound impact on survivors, families, and communities. This moment has also renewed the fight to find the person responsible for shooting Deanna and bring them to justice. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. Let Deanna's story be a reminder that our efforts to end gun violence must be relentless and unyielding. Rest in peace, Miss Deanna Isom.